Hi there, and welcome to this quick start guide for motion matching for Unity. In part one of this quick start guide, we're going to look at installing motion matching for Unity, as well as its dependencies from the Unity package manager. This is a very, very important step. So please follow along as if you don't, you will have errors in your project and it simply won't work. So let's create a new project. I'm going to use 2019.2x. Um, you can use any version you like uh, above 2018.4. However, I, I just must warn you if you are using a beta, it will probably work. However, if there are any errors specific to betas, I will not be fixing them until it's out of beta. So let's create a new project and we will call it quick start. And let's create. Okay, once your project has opened, let's, before we even import MXM, let's go straight to the package manager and we'll click on advanced, show preview packages. That takes a little while to come up sometimes. There's a number of packages that we need to install. So let's start with the mathematics package, which is under M. So this is a SIMD mathematics library that's used with Burst. It helps make things ultra fast and MXM uses it a lot. It's part of the dots tech stack. Next package we need is the collections package. And this is for the native arrays used by the dots tech stack and jobs. So let's go to collections and we'll install that. We'll need the multi-threading job system. Um, we'll need the preview version of that. And of course this collections one is a preview um, because there's some things that are required by the jobs preview package. So we'll install the preview jobs package. Keep in mind in the future, this might change. Some of these packages might become part of the engine. So you may not need to install them specific explicitly, but for now, this is the current state. Okay, that's jobs installed. And the last one was burst. Now when we installed jobs, it automatically installed burst. So there you go. So this one here, burst, if you don't have that tick, you're going to need that. That just makes the jobs run ultra fast, converting the C sharp to um, SIMD machine code, which is uh, just, it's incredibly fast. Okay, so that's all we need for MXM itself. However, we're going to play with the demo a bit. And the demo, I've used Cinemachine uh, for the ca camera. So might as well just grab Cinemachine as well. Now there's one last package and it's not compulsory, it's not even necessary. However, it can be useful for debugging your animation graph. Most of the time this is just happening in the background with Mechanum and you never see it, but it can be very useful with MXM to help with debugging if you have any problems. Uh, you can choose to install this or not, but we'll grab the playable graph visualizer. It's also a preview package. It just lets you see your animation graph. Okay. All our packages are installed. That's all the dependencies. So now let's go and install MXM. We'll import it. Either you've got a package that you can double click on or we can go straight to the asset store. Go to my assets. Actually, I'm going to do a search because I've technically never bought my own package, but um, here it is. I can still import it. All right, we can click download or update in my case. So that's import now. And I'm just going to choose everything. One thing I really do want to keep in um, you to keep in mind is that I've got the section called documentation. It's there for a reason. It's not just there to be pretty. There's a lot, a lot of information. Motion matching is a very different way of thinking of animation. So there is a steep learning curve, but it becomes easier as you go. These guides are very comprehensive. I've spent a lot of time working on it. This quick start guide mirrors these um, videos. The user manual is thick with information, not just what each button does, but also concepts that you need to understand. And if you're wanting to make animation for motion matching specifically, um, then there's a guide for that as well. So that's all there. So let's hit import. We'll import the lot. Okay, so that looks like it's imported well. So we've got our scene, we've got our project view, and motion matching for Unity is stored under plugins, motion matching, and we can see our folders. We've got the code. This is the core of MXM. That's what you'll need. Here's the demo, 
and here's the documentation and they're all PDFs, but I want you to understand also, let me just open one up quickly. They're full of links and there's actually a live version of these and those will always be the most up to date. Um, so keep that in mind, it has all the information that we've looked at and the manual is even bigger. So, and for full of more information. So that's, that's that we can go to our demo. Let's open up our scenes MXM demo and we'll have a look at motion matching in action. Okay, so before we hit play, we need to set up a couple of inputs. Now this isn't anything to do with MXM. It's just that the demo camera uses some joystick input for um, its rotating around. So I'm just gonna add it so we don't get um, the errors saying you don't have an input. Uh, you can choose to add it or not. The errors are inconsequential. Um, and yeah, so I'm just gonna quick set that up quickly. You can do it, follow along if you want. So horizontal cam. Second one is vertical cam. Okay, so that's set up. Just two inputs that um, the gameplay script uses for this demo. Okay, now that we have that all set up, let's hit play. Keep in mind that I have made this for a Xbox controller or a gamepad controller in general. It does work with keyboard, but um, just keep in mind you'll, it'll feel better because I've designed it that way. You'll also be able to get you know walking because it's you know half sticking it. So here we have our character and he walks and there's no state machine. He's just picking the animations through the technique of motion matching, getting in plants and all sorts of turns and curves and stops and everything. Now I've also added in a vaulting system into this demo to demonstrate MXM's event uh, like contact matching system. And I'll go into that later, but you can see that here. Just keep in mind that the actual vault detection, like detecting where an object is and where the contact should be, that's not a part of MXM. That's an example demo code that I've included with this demo to give you an idea of how you could implement your own system um, or, and how to really get the most out of the power of the motion matching system. But we're going to go through a lot in detail of that in the later tutorials. Um, but for this quick start guide, let's just have a look at what it's what it does. Um, now, the results here are pretty good for what they are. So the animation set I'm using is Unity's raw mocap animation set. And it's not really great for motion matching for Unity. It's poorly acted. It's missing transitions. Um, it's missing... Um, it's just missing a lot of stuff and it doesn't connect up very well. It's, it's not ideal for motion matching. However, it's one of the only free animation sets that I have available to redistribute. So I've done my best with what I have in this demo. If you have true mocap data made for motion matching, then you're gonna get a heck of a lot better results. And you can even get really good results with uh, professionally made cut clips. Um, so yeah, there you have it. So we can run and vault and we can jump up and we can jump down and all that. So what's actually happening here? How is it doing this all under the hood? So we're not gonna go into too much detail on all the components and that. We'll leave that for a later tutorial. And also part two of this quick start guide where we'll make a simple character, um, not quite to this, um, this amount, but just a simple character to get used to using the components. Now if we hit gizmos, we're going to see let me just unfurl that. Okay, there we go. We're going to see a whole bunch of gizmos playing and this is basically what's happening under the hood. There's three aspects to this. There's this, these yellow dots and you can see that they have these arrows coming off them as he moves. Um, that is the pose. So the pose is only being matched for the left foot, the right foot and the hips. And it's both a relative position and a relative velocity. Those lines represent the velocity. If I pause the it we can have a closer look in the scene view and we can see that this foot has a relative velocity compared to the character that way so that's the pose aspect of it the next is all this trajectory stuff so let me go back to the game now the green trajectory is a future trajectory that is predicted based on my input on the stick. Once I, as I move my input, that green trajectory changes both its facing direction and position. These darker green ones are actually a recorded past. Now the red one 
is the trajectory of the animation at the current pose. So it's the future and past trajectory of the animation at the current pose. Now what's happening under the hood is motion matching is taking this green trajectory and the current pose of the character and it's going through all the animation in our database and saying, okay, which animation has a trajectory that matches closest and a pose that matches closest. Whatever is the closest animation, it just jumps to instantly. Well, not instantly, it blends to it. So motion matching is constantly doing this in order to get fluid motion. And as a result, it really loves having fluid animation that has no continuity gaps. Now, maybe you didn't understand any of that, and that's okay. This is just a brief overview. Motion matching is a very different way of thinking about animation in games, especially if you're used to the rigid um, and logical setup of a state machine. We're going to go in much more depth into this, especially how to solve particular problems and about coverage and continuity. For now, just have a go at playing around with this, and um, yeah, enjoy.